It is the single largest collaborative engineering project ever undertaken. Brimming with experiments and life support systems, the International Space Station flies around the Earth every 92 minutes and 39 seconds. A crew of six astronauts fills its days producing science, testing new technologies, and exploring the kaleidoscopic world below. Their mission, to learn to live in space, to understand what it will take to one day build permanent colonies on other planets. The present is a photograph, a still image of history in motion. Mankind exists in a constant state of becoming, in an ever-changing world and state of mind. What does our future hold? Hundreds even thousands of years from now. Decades ago, we sent astronauts to the moon. In those heady days, a dream was born. To establish a permanent mission in space, We envisioned an infrastructure that would allow us to spend prolonged periods exploring the moon. Mining asteroids. And even colonizing Mars. So far, we've relied on robots to do the work of exploring the solar system. If humans are to follow, we'll need to build colonies, base camps, that allow us to move out to roam the landscape, to see and study the terrain up close. To do that, we'll need to develop life support systems, methods for recycling and growing food, and the equipment needed to work outside. For two decades now, we have been taking a series of long and deliberate steps toward learning to live in space. Racing around the Earth, at 25,000 kilometers per hour. The International Space Station was designed as the beginning of humanity's permanent move into space. Dating back to the first module launched in 1998, it is the largest collaborative engineering project in the history of mankind. The station is now fully in place. This sprawling structure, the size of a football field, hosts a complex arrangement of modules and nodes, and a network of labs and living areas. Astronauts are learning to live in space for extended periods of time. Apart from the climate systems, the resources, and comforts of our home planet, they do this in six-month crew rotations. And by continually experimenting with ways to live and cope with a whole new environment, 
resupply missions from Earth arrive up to six times each year. These unmanned capsules from Russia and the United States carry hundreds of meals, new equipment to install and test, and scientific experiments. Recently, a module named Leonardo, originally used to transport materials to and from the station, was moved to a permanent node. It will remain a part of the ISS dedicated to stowage for experiments and resupply. The 17.6 meter Canadarm2 attached to the station completed the relocation process. Just as it does with all modules and spacewalk procedures. Learning about structural components that assist in long-term space travel brings the station closer to the goal of setting up permanent colonies on Mars or the Moon. The International Space Station is a hub for zero-gravity science. At any given time, the six-member crew is conducting pointed research into the life support systems and amenities of living in space. Fifty years ago, space colonization was not so pragmatic. Romanticized depictions of megastructures dominated both popular culture and physical science. One scientist, Gerard O'Neill, envisioned giant cylinders 20 miles in length to sustain human life in space. The cylinders would rotate, simulating Earth's gravity. In these expansive colonies, humans would live and work as they do on Earth, in comfortable housing flanked by fields for agriculture. This utopian vision flourished just as engineers began work on the space transportation system, the Space Shuttle. Astronauts began flying the shuttle on orbital missions in 1982. Finally, in 1998, Russian rocket and shuttle flights began lifting components of the International Space Station into orbit. As this giant orbiting laboratory took shape, the challenge of living in space yielded to a practical program of scientific experimentation and data collection. One crucial program, growing plants to expand organic food options for space travelers, NASA worked with Orbitech business director Paul Zamparelli to create Veggie a unit that allows astronauts to cultivate their own crops for consumption. Veggie utilizes a unique combination of LED lights to provide plants with nutrients necessary for growth. That gives the astronauts both a source of enjoyment and fresh food. There are psychological benefits as well. Astronauts face enough pressures as it is, working out twice a day for two and a half hours to avoid bone loss, maintaining a heavy workload, and living apart from their families for months at a time. Bringing along a little piece of Earth provides them with both escape and comfort. A recent NASA innovation, known as Advanced Plant Habitat, promises to quadruple Veggie's light output while adding white and infrared light to the old array of LEDs. Learning about plant growth in space while working on this new habitat 
has allowed researchers to redefine their designs and maximize produce. These modifications will one day be the key to turning the 21-month journey to and from Mars, from fiction to reality. Of course, the development of contraptions for sustainability and life support does not stop there. The environmental control and life support system is now used across the entire ISS. Designed for shorter expeditions, this extensive system controls temperature, cabin pressure, air content, and so on. Longer voyages, however, require a higher degree of air and liquid recycling. Since the new life system was installed, astronauts have salvaged tens of thousands of pounds of potable water from urine. If that much water had been brought from Earth, it would have cost more than 225 million to launch and deliver it to the station. Beyond saving money, eliminating unnecessary supply trips is the only way future travelers will survive the nine-month passage to Mars. If they can mine water when they get there, they'll know how to recycle it for sustainable living. What makes an ISS experiment unique or necessary? The answer is microgravity. Scientists focus on the different ways in which materials combust, cohere, and move. NASA's online database contains over 1,175 research reports on projects ranging from 3D printing to mushroom germination in zero gravity. The results of these reports have been used in both space and Earth applications and have led to numerous adjustments to ISS equipment. In one series of experiments on capillary flow, researchers at the ISS studied fluid dynamics in microgravity. Bubbling fluids like these were put in small pipes typically used in medical procedures such as HIV AIDS diagnosis. Scott Kelly has been at the station for a full year to test the effects of space on the body. He puts his own spin on the bubble experiment by adding a color dye. The dye causes the size of bubbles within the spear to change. By creating fascinating setups such as this one, NASA astronauts can ask all types of questions. What happens to the bubbles after their discharge? Do they evaporate? As the bubbles produced by the tablet attempt to escape, one might ask, why does the air trapped inside act differently when in space? For citizens whose daily lives do not revolve around groundbreaking scientific advancements, it is easy to forget that for every scientific success in the news, there are tens of thousands of failures that never become public. It's no different up here, in orbit some 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Researchers aboard the International Space Station spend their weeks and months running experiments, collecting data, while learning to live in space.
their goal to spur innovations useful to humanity and allow future generations of explorers to move out into the solar system. We can only imagine where our restless state of mind will take us and what humanity will one day become. What will today's experiments in orbit teach us about living in space? What will the vantage point of space teach us about ourselves and about Earth? <laughs>